A Look Under the Shell is an Everlook Broadcasting Company production. Welcome everyone to the first episode of A Look Under the Shell. My name is Dan and I'll be the host, well the, the structural host I'll say for, for the broadcast. Unlike living in the past, I'm actually not going to be doing most of the talking here. Um, you're going to want to be hearing from our guests consistently more than myself. Uh, before we introduce those two, I, I just want to start out by saying this is a production that is primarily about giving you as community members uh, insight into not just the development of Turtle as a server, but also giving you more context with what's going on. Um, a lot of what you're going to be hearing about is um, very, very fresh information. Um, many times it's going to be stuff that is currently being worked on or about to be worked on. Um, so please take with a grain of salt everything that we discuss here. Uh, and keep in mind, it's all being done uh, for the purpose of being more transparent and being more uh, open and accessible when it comes to how the development of the server is coming along. Uh, with that being said, though, to start things out on the best level possible, uh, let's just get a, a solid introduction for Vrograg and Acolix, for those of you who don't know don't know who these wonderful folks are. Um, it's not just me doing, doing this podcast by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, these two have been wonderful folks to work with, not just on this project, but on so many other projects for, for Turtle. So, uh, Vrograg, starting out with yourself, go ahead and give... Uh, the folks listening, uh, a quick introduction for who you are and what you do. Hi, my name is Vrograg Fishlayer. Um, I have been on Turtle Wow since late 2022. I have been a player, a raider, and a role player on the server for much and uh, all of that time. Somewhere along the line, I thought it would be fun to do community news. Uh, content, which I've been doing for uh, close to a year now. Uh, fortunately, the community has been very good about that. And I have become a, a, a sort of VIP of sorts on the server. I'm not really a, uh, I'm not at all a team member. I'm just a voice for the community. Uh, I'm a player and I like advocating for players in all respects with the team. And, and with, this project in particular, uh, we're, we're going to call it for now uh, a look under the shell. Um, we're still we're still workshopping the name a little bit, but uh, what what are you bringing to the table here with this? What what is really the reason that you're participating? Oh, I'm I'm participating for a number of reasons. One is because I enjoy making content for the Turtle Wow community. Uh, secondly because I think in places where there are team members, where there is uh, management saying things, I think there should always be a community voice, a player, uh, someone to uh, speak and say also what the players want, how players can interpret things, and just overall keep things on the up and up and always uh, make sure things stay fun for everyone who's involved on the project. And speaking of developers and staff members, um, our, our other side of the Vrograg coin here is, is Acolix. Everyone should know who Acolix is. Uh, community manager, the person who really helps guide the front-facing anything, I'll say, for, uh, for Turtle, uh, whether it be socials or it be more of the uh, community-driven side of things. Uh, but for those that don't know who you are, Acolix, go ahead, just like with Vrograg, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your background with Turtle, and then uh, give us a little more details on your position with the Turtle team. So, um, 
Yes, I'm uh, I'm a Calix, and I've been a player on Turtle WoW since 2021. Uh, in mid, I believe it was. Yeah, it was August uh, 2022. I joined the Turtle WoW team, and have been slowly getting more involved in more and more facets with the team ever since. Um, and as of now, my main roles on the team are as the English community manager. So that means sort of I work not necessarily just as a support team member, but uh, I work sort of in tandem with the support team to where I help. Uh, and this is more tied into the other one of the other roles I do, which is the PR lead for Turtle. Um, basically, what I do is I try to look at what the community wants, what the community thinks about things. And I tried to be a bridge between the devs and the community. And that's not always something that's entirely possible to do in a very smooth way. There's always a lot of complications there with the fact that I am trying to condense the opinions of thousands of people into a serviceable and actionable idea. But generally, I try to stay as involved as I can with the community to do that to the best of my ability and that's why uh, if you ever see a high elf hunter in game named a Akal- that's me that's not uh gm that's not impersonator that's that's me i mean seven out of eight tier two not the best player not the best gear but i just i play turtle wow i try to get the best uh understanding of what the actual experience on the server is like and then i try to you know ensure that the community and the devs are on the same page about what is happening and what should be happening. Okay. Before, before we continue, because I want to keep the the show running smoothly, but two questions. First off, which piece of tier two are you missing? Just sheer curiosity. Uh, the bracers from the very first boss. Really? Yep. Oh, that's rough. That that's very rough. Second off how I just realized that we've been mispronouncing your name this whole time. Acolix, not Acolix. Uh, that's that's one where I I don't really correct people on it because I don't care too much between the two. Uh, it's pretty interchangeable to me. Uh, so if you call me Acolix, Acolix, doesn't really matter. Um, a good number of the support team have just taken to calling me AK because they couldn't like figure out how it was pronounced and didn't want to get it wrong. Oh, Meanwhile, okay. I just I just went ahead and just made up a pronunciation, and now it's stuck. Unfortunately, that's where I got my pronunciation from. Oh Lord! <laughs> You're welcome. Ooh. Uh So, ne- needless to say, um, while the three of us approach this from different directions, uh, the beauty of how we've kind of come to come to this production is we're all meeting towards the center of that central point of creating transparency and sharing information uh, about Turtle Wow. And that's really the overarching point. And that's, again, what binds this whole project together. Um, and, and with that kind of that kind of being said, um, while I am here, I do want to state, I, I'm, I'm still functioning in that very kind of limited, I'm structuring everything uh, kind of format. The majority of the conversation here is going to come from the two folks next to me, Vrograg and Akalix here, to make sure um, things things continue to flow smoothly. Um, in regards to topics and actually how we're going to approach them, and I'm I'm Vrograg, I'm going to kind of swivel my virtual chair towards you first. Um, what what is it you would like? to see out of out of this project that's a very broad question and i could wax poetic about it a lot i think in general what i would like to see out of the project would be an easier bar for entry and i and uh i even misspoke when i said when i started i started in late 2021 and the project was in a very different spot as it is now. And I think getting people in sometimes can be difficult. It's on an old client. There's a lot of 
quirks to it. I can I think that can sometimes be a barrier for entry, but in general, I want to get as many people involved as possible. And when I even say people, I don't just mean new players either. I mean players who are maybe someone who's just involved in PvP to try out an RP session, someone who's just doing RP to maybe try some PvE. There's so much on the server that's different, new, and discoverable that I really think it's the best private server experience that's out there. So anything that can encourage people to engage with the community is pretty much something that I will be for and I would always promote. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And one one conversation that, uh, Akalix, while you weren't uh, directly involved in the conversation per se, it's something that um, Rograg and I were talking a little bit about on his fishing chat uh this weekend which was how how do we kind of generate discoverability for for turtle as a whole um obviously something that you you have to um deal with on a very regular basis compared to us uh, what what do you think discoverability wise that we can get out of not just projects like this but with community content creators in general which is kind of what we were talking about earlier this week Um, so generally, at least my goal for this project, mm -hmm. um, is more along the lines of just, I want it to sort of be something to where I can point people to this and say, Hey, give that a listen. Uh, when they're asking about, well, why does it take so long for turtle to do this? Or why is, why does turtle do this? Why does turtle do that? It's sort of, there's always this sort of four chains of separate, ah, Four stages of separation between like uh, why something happens and the average player. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be easier for the average player to sort of understand why something happens and to get more of a uh, a view behind the scenes into what's happening on turtle so that they can know okay well this is the person who's in charge of that and they just told me this that and the other okay yeah because it's it's a lot different to read a a post on a forum page mm -hmm. that just says hey we're buffing paladins paladins need more crit Oh God! You had to say that. Uh, versus, oh, oh Lord! You had to say that. <laughs> versus reading, uh, versus hearing somebody say, "So, I'm one of the lead devs on this project. Uh, I'm changing it so that paladins have this more crit because they underperform in this metric. Yada yada. I've seen this. I've seen that. Like when there is a person behind an idea in a more physical manner." Mm -hmm. I feel like it'll reduce the overall num amount of people just going, oh, why does Turtle do this? Why does Turtle do that? Why Nothing makes sense. Devs are out of touch, yada, yada. Because a lot of people don't really realize it, but everything that's done is done for a reason and with good intentions. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think that anybody who is working on the project is wanting to make anything worse for a player. So it's just a matter of really, I want it to be somewhere where I can maybe in a future episode, I'll have on like Shang and we can ask about like, why is this questing zone this way when this seem when this seems like this or why is, or have Jamie on why is this doing this? Uh, well, okay, he can give you the reason. He can talk about the core at a better level than I can because he understands how the beeps and boops work, and I understand what he says about the beeps and boops. That, so, is, that is really something that I also have attempted to do with my my news broadcasts, is that I will take these like one-line changes from a change log and try to give them context by going through like the GitHub bug tracker to be like, this is why this thing is. 
And sometimes I have in, uh, like conversations or interviews, whether it's with a team member or with someone behind the scenes with like a guild or something to give context in a more larger sense to why things are the way they are. Because I think it's not controversial to say that uh, Turtle Wow does things differently and they have for a long time. And it's part of the charm, but also knowing, like Aklix was saying, that there are people behind these ideas, um, it really gets at a bigger concept that I think players of many online games get completely separated by the corporatization of video games and studios from how an idea becomes a reality. That, and makes, the second, that makes sense. You know um, what I mean? That, ma that makes a lot of sense. More yeah, than and, anything, and the, yeah. More than anything else, I loved your beep 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 boop beep boop line there, Kyle. That was first off, that was majestic. Um, <laughs> second, second off, um, and I think I think this kind of goes to the heart of the reason why something like a project like this is so important is creating that that transparency, that real human behind the project for for turtle um obviously the the team speaks many different languages um a minority of of the turtle team actually speaks english english natively um many of them can to a certain level but there's there's always that struggle sometimes for okay are we translating this properly is this being presented in the right way compared to what the person's original language is and how they're trying to present it. Um, and, and that's also another big reason why, Akalix, you're involved is to make sure the team is being represented in a way that is fair and reasonable and accurate to what what they want to have represented. Um, it, it's, it's no secret that, um, again, the turtle community at large is very diverse. So making sure uh, these these ideas and concepts are represented correctly, and, and then making sure when people when devs do want to come on and speak um, on, on their own and and they're able to um, that we respect that. And I think I, I again I don't know how how big of a deal that is for you, Agalix, but um, that feels like one of the major reasons why we're going to do this. Yeah, I. It's always something where um, in any sort of announcement or anything like that, 90% of them, I am, I read through the draft and will either rewrite or modify it a good bit just because the initial version. And there, there are a couple that I didn't have a touch on and you can probably, you would probably be able to pick them out just because it's very different to understand what you're wanting to say in a language versus the best most natural way to say it in language and i don't want the concern of any developer to be like trying to figure out how to explain something when i can do that for them i can they can tell me okay what do they mean to say they mean to say this beep now boops correctly and i can figure out how to put that in the terms of because this beep wasn't booping correctly, we've turned it up three octaves, so now the beep is a boop instead of a beep being a boop. Like, it's, it's a matter of trying to make it so that the information is easily digestible to the public while accurately representing the actual information from the people behind it without trying to burden them with trying to make it easily digestible. Absolutely. Thank you for keeping up the analogy too. Uh, and, and overall, especially, and, and I think both of you mentioned this in, in this day and age where sometimes the reaction to developer notes, patch updates, that kind of thing can not only be stark, but sometimes exceedingly aggressive or dismissive, um, making sure we can provide that magical word that Vrograg you said, context, is is something that is sorely needed. Especially, and I believe I mentioned this on Living in the Past the other week. Um, how how independent 
and how very much the the vanilla plus community at large not just turtle but at large um we we tend to be very um opinionated and very loud and and very sometimes aggressive naturally just because so long we have been told hey you don't know what you want you don't want this when the opposite has always been true so um making making sure and rograg i think i think uh with with your regular news broadcast, you have a good knowledge of this. Um, yeah, we, I really do. We we are opinionated almost to a fault. Yeah, and to a certain extent, I think it's even healthy to have very spirited debate about changes that are coming down the pipeline. And to a certain level, I I always think that it shows a level of of care. If no one cares about changes, then then who's really playing your game? But it often devolves into name calling, into vitriol, and it it just isn't healthy for the community. And I think one of the greatest strengths of the Turtle Wow community itself is that there definitely has been moves made to uh, really take some of that edge off by um, really not promoting uh, really vitriolic language and, and, and hateful things being said. Because, as we were mentioning before, these are people behind these decisions. And because we know they're people, now it's incumbent upon the player base to to be respectful. This isn't just a nameless corporation. These are just somewhere between a hobbyist and an extreme hobbyist just doing this project. And I still think to a certain level that deserves some amount of respect. And I think players uh, and community members can provide that if if they just just tune it down a couple notches. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, before before we go to our break here, um, really quick, do either of you have any any closing thoughts on what what you want to see out of the show or or what you want to see out of out of this production or anything you'd like to add on those specific subjects here? I would love, as you mentioned before, more transparency. It's one of the big themes of my show is that uh, transparency is a good thing. I like teaching people about uh, Western style media and journalism also. And I think transparency uh, always helps to that respect because uh, trust works both ways. When you have transparency, you can really start building trust. So I think one of the great things that this show could offer is hearing from these people, getting some of that rapport and and start starting to really sow the seeds of of trust and really fostering that. Oh, very good. Akalix, any thoughts from yourself? Um, just that uh this also I think one of the best things that the show could do is um sort of allow us to elaborate more than we can in uh, any sort of initial announcement form post. Um, there's one thing in mind, which we teased, which was um, at the very end of the road map, Turtle Wow 2.0. Parentheses, not the Burning Crusade. Um, which is something where I very much imagine when we uh, put out our a bit more information about that later this year. I definitely will want to probably bring on, if I had to pick someone off the top of my head, I'd probably bring on Jamie because he'd be able to give the most information about it. Um, but mm, there's a couple other people that come to mind, but uh, somebody who'd be able to really get into the meat and potatoes as to how we are doing it. And mm -hmm. the why will be very obvious at that point, but um, sort of how we're doing it and what all it entails. I'm openly salivating right now. <laughs> Bro Greg's like, but I want the details. <laughs> I know. I'm being so careful with you, the yeah, words that I choose right, yeah. to describe it because it is a... If I say the wrong word, it will be very evident what Turtle Wow 2.0 is. But here's, and here's, as of right now, it uh, is something where we are very heavily... Um, 
restricting any sort of information about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Internally, some is known, but not everything is uh, even known about it internally. But there has been there's some knowledge about it internally. And it has been put on the level of if you leak this and we find out it was you that leaked this, you will not be part of the team anymore. And so. I, the, I, I understand why people assume it's it's the Burning Crusade because that's the natural progression for any vanilla player is, okay, now we go to Outland. But mm. the fact of the matter is, is that there's so much more world out there. There's so much more that can be done than just going to Outland. And and this is this is reaching into into my lore brain just a little bit, but there's there's so much more world out there. There's so much more depth you can add. There's so much expansion or contraction. There's so many other mechanics. And it's just I, I, I hope people are very open minded once we actually get to find out like what it is. So with that with that being said though, um, we do need to go ahead and take our time out here. So when we come back Uh, more discussion on potential future topics, uh, a little more detail on the exact structure of the broadcast, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up our first episode of Under the Shell. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more after this. The musical tracks for this episode have been removed due to YouTube copyright. To listen to the full episodes with music, Tune in to Everlook Broadcasting with the in-game radio widget. And welcome back to Under the Shell. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan, joined by Vrogreg and Akalix. We're going to go ahead and talk about new topics that we want to cover. Well, not necessarily new. I don't know why I put new in there, but the, the potential topics that we want to cover here for the broadcast. But before I do, I just want to do a little... Uh, explanation as to the show that we've experienced so far and talk about the structure itself. Um, certainly, I, I'm i not someone who's going to let things ramble on for a couple hours as much as Frograg really wants to talk for that long. We're not, not, we're, <laughs> not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, so a lot of what you've heard in the first segment of the show is very indicative as to what what we're going to uh, experience broadcast-wise. Uh, we're going to open with just a really general reference of topics, people that we're going to have on, and then introductions for any individuals that we're going to going to have on with us. Um, we're not going to do the full introduction for Rogue Rag and Nicolics here uh, on, a, on a regular basis just because you've already gotten that. So whenever we have a vital community member coming on, then we'll be doing an introduction. Uh, We have a dev who wants to join us to share some details and information. Then we have them go ahead and describe, you know, their role, how they're part of the team, what they do, that kind of thing. After that, we will generally break the show up by topic or discussion point. Um, So the first set of discussion points we held there in the first segment was, you know, the basic concept of the show, what we want to see out of it. And then the second segment is going to be mostly about the topics that we want to cover during it. Um, And that's going to kind of be the general format of the broadcast. I want to try to include as few breaks as possible just to make sure it's easy to digest. But I also feel those breaks are vital to make sure it's easy to digest. But I'm not going to hit you with five, six breaks in a single show. That would be ridiculous. With that being said bro greg what topics would you like us to, to, to make sure we cover here um is there anything that ev- even if it's like pie in the sky you're reaching for something and you know you're never going to be able to bring it in but what what are those topics you would love to really see us cover here the topics that i would like to see covered um like i mentioned before in the previous segment, a lot of community engagement stuff. So what I mean is hearing from role players, hearing from 
the stories they've made, uh, hearing about the history of Turtle Wow. It's a server that's been around for a long time, and there's another server now in Telebim. There's history and communities being made. Hearing what the experience from players, guild leaders, and other people, maybe even uh, just who are heavily involved in the PvP scene, hearing what their experiences are like, and hearing what their interfacing with the community at large has been. Uh, I think that would be, you know, at a baseline what I would like, but, you know, the topics that I would love covering are all all the controversial ones, you know, like like your <laughs> when our guild house is going to come back, you know, those kind of stories and and the kind of things that will make Akalik sweat. But uh, I was about to say, know. it sounds like you're specifically trying to induce an aneurysm in, yeah, in our I, wonderful yeah. friend here. You know, um, Akalik and I have worked together because as he's the head of PR, um, I often have to work with him for news. So we have a working relationship and mutual respect, but we do like um, jabbing at each other with our with our own separate interests. And uh, it, it makes for a fun repartee between us. Uh, but I, I think in general, there are there are always topics that people want to have covered uh, on any media. And so any opportunity that I can help bring those to the fore and have them spoken about, whether it's from a team member or Acolyx or just anyone, I think it's it's good and it brings more coverage and I think it will enrich the community. Before before I ask you about what topics you would like to see, uh, Acolyx, um, I, I, I will give you the option to respond <laughs> to him trying to drive up your blood pressure. <laughs> Uh, coming soon, TM. Fair, fair enough. Mm, classic. <laughs> More blood <laughs> pressure coming soon. Uh, what? Obviously, on the on the dev side of things, you have a unique perspective. You get to see inside um, the most secretive of halls, so to speak. Um, what What is it that you would want to see brought to the forefront? What What do you want to make sure that we cover in order to make sure the devs are getting uh, not just a fair shake? but are, are being perceived um, reasonably and respectfully? Um, the biggest thing that I would really want to talk about is um, I really want to talk about sort of uh, the upcoming projects as we are getting closer to them. Um, so whether that is like uh, when we're getting closer to the release of 1.17.2, talking a bit about that, or... Uh, when we get to Hammers and Talons 1.18. I'd love to talk a bit about that. Um, my, my main thing that I would love to talk about is just always whenever something is coming, I want to talk about sort of more of the process behind it, more of the information and details behind it, because there's a lot, uh, I found out the hard way, <laughs> that goes into these patches that <laughs> sort of falls between the uh falls under what everyone sees nobody uh, nobody thinks about like how it takes a day to fix some random bug because we're on a client as old as i am and it just implodes randomly because it's chill like that i think a i think a strong example of of what you're mentioning here is um, as many of us remember from when Karazan released up through, you know, good Lord knows a month ago, um, Morose and oh, the wonderful wow. antics that he engaged with somehow. Um, Alex, how, how long has it been dealing with, with Morose and his nonsense? Um, I know that in the support team, there was an image circulating that was the, um, the Simpsons meme of days since last incident where it just was <laughs> constantly getting reset to zero days since last morose bug zero zero negative one zero. The answer is four months. That guy just did not want to work. <laughs> and, he, and he really didn't. I, I I just recently discovered the the more long term solution for yep. for working with him, which was we're just going to move him. We're just going to. Yeah, smush smush his his 
um, put in time out. phases and move him. Uh, with with that being with that being said, though, um, what other are there any other topics that you want to make sure uh, we cover? Is there anything that you want to to make sure the devs get an opportunity to expound on anything specific? Um. Beyond like the big patches, I'm going to want to talk about those. Um, I would love to give more individual departments, um, everyone from narrative to modeling to. Eh, I mean, we could even come on for the roast of Dragonovi and do a item uh, design and balance, and just try to give each department sort of a a chance to talk more about their design philosophy and how they do the things they do, why they do the things they do, that sort of stuff. Give them a chance to talk about like the process for theirs. Uh, I think that even, even for like support, that could be a very cool thing where people know that obviously the support team, we ban a lot of botters, a lot of this, that, and the other. How do we recognize the patterns there? What do we... How does the support team decide between... Am I going to nuke this person from orbit? Or is this just someone who's playing on a console on 300 ping with one hand on a controller and the other scratching their butt and eating Doritos? How do I tell the difference between that and a bot? And sort of being able to talk about some of the... Uh, some of the interesting stories that we've garnered over time because I so the support team is the one that I uh interact with and work with the most um the so GMs do good work yeah. and they definitely deserve as much coverage as they can get I think they're absolutely a cornerstone of the community and anything you can do to demystify what they do is probably good mhm mm absolutely um as I said on a, a previous episode of living in the past um the the GMs don't get enough enough credit, uh, especially for the amount of flack that they unfortunately have to deal with on a regular basis. Um, they they deserve all the credit in the world, and there's not. I I don't think there's anything that anyone could do to change my mind on that. It's a very thankless job. I, I'm very proud of our team where they are right now in that. When I sort of started getting more put in a position uh, in a higher support position, because I, I am one of the senior support members. Um, when I started getting more into being in that position and being able to try to get, we very much had a reputation at the time for over moderating um, and for unfair moderation where it would be, like you would get nuked from orbit because you annoyed a GM. Uh, and I'm very proud of our current team because we don't really have that reputation or those issues anymore. We are everyone who plays on the server will tell you, you will get a response here faster than almost anywhere else. And I, I put out the, uh, the post a while back, so I don't have the exact numbers on my head anymore, but I believe it was like 71, 72 seconds average wait time for a ticket. Compare that to something where you could be waiting over a day for an automated response that won't help you, and then you'll be waiting another three days for an actual human to reply. And compare the fact that ours is a free service and that some other options aren't a free service that are given that sort of mm, customer mm -hmm. service. Yep, uh, yep. I, I, it's something that I'm very proud of, for, of from our team. And I think it's one of our biggest, it is one of our least talked about, but best selling points is why should you play on turtle? Wow. Well, if you get stuck in a hole and you can't move your character and you deleted your hearthstone, you're not going to have to wait three days to play that character again. You put in a ticket and 60 seconds later, somebody teleports you out and gives you a pat on the head. He says, have a good day. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. that. That's a very good point, though. It's a very good point. Um, turning to not necessarily like closing thoughts here, but um, kind of wrapping all this up in a little bit of a bow, we'll, we'll say. Um, when it comes to... 
kind of what I I want to see. Um, I am looking forward to those patch discussions big time. Um, people have heard me uh, talk, I would say, ad nauseum about a lot of the 1171 stuff I can't wait for. Um, if people hear me mention the alternative tier sets one more time, I might get skewered by someone. Um, but those are also... Those are also kind of like the the big things that I can't wait to make sure we're having these discussions on um, and, and making sure there is uh, more transparency with them. I know a lot of people were excited for the alternative tier sets um, and when they did get pushed back along with the class 2.0 updates, um, it, it was it was something that people weren't super happy about. And that's that's OK. Recognizing that this is something that the community community does want gives us those guide posts to to make sure you know we're able to present information in the best of ways um and and to to kind of use that use that as a a uh a way to to provide the audience you folks listening out there with a little more direction for this we and by we i mean me um because i'm kind of the one structuring all this and i do want to hear about about what you want to hear Please let me know, and whether that's, you know, okay, you're pinging me in the support channel in the Turtle Discord, or you're DMing me, or or you're commenting on, on YouTube in some way. Please let me know what you would like to hear us discuss, because this isn't just for our benefit, uh, for, for the benefit of the developers, but the benefit of you being able to hear what you're curious about what you want to know more about how you want to have information uh del- almost like catered to you um communication is never a one-way street it's always cyclical so um feedback is always greatly uh, appreciated um with that with that being said though um I, I are we able to say anything about uh, the upcoming patch are we able are we able to say anything about where the class council discussions are at um obviously with Vrograg, your your coverage uh the other week much much discussion has uh ha- has reared its head um but is there anything we can say currently uh, about where things are at so i can comment a little bit on that um it's not like there is this or that that is already established as done and settled um, in terms of class changes. There's some stuff that is pre-settled, but primarily with the bulk of the class changes themselves, they are not done yet. But that is primarily because the current discussions that are happening are ones that the people they chosen in the server do not actually know about. Um, There are weekly meetings from the staff side uh, discussing uh, basically getting our vision united on what we think needs changed, what we agree with, uh, to the point where we had multiple meetings that were just hours of talking about the philosophy behind the classes, not even talking about like implementation or do I think this needs a buff or this needs a nerf? Do we think this gameplay is good? This gameplay is bad. It was just philosophy. It was just talking about, do we think that this feels right? Do we think that, uh, one that I'll say is, do we think survival hunter feels right being a, like, melee class or a trap based class or w- what should they be, right? What do we want our approach to? to the design to be not what ability should we give it not what stat should we give it just do we want it to be a trap class a melee class a dual wielding pistols class that would actually be sick but that, that would it. be that would be epic um but yeah it was it's been something that's been getting worked on a lot in the background is we are trying to unify the team's design philosophy for it before we move into discussing specific numerical changes with the council because sure. we don't want it to be a, okay, yeah, how do you think that uh, we should proceed forward with this? And then 
oh, I think we should do this. Oh, I think we should do this. Oh, I think we should do this. We want to sort of give everybody an opportunity to discuss what they think is a good approach. And a lot of people have written out a lot of good stuff and has been read by the team and discussed. Um, but it's not currently, like... It's not at the stage where we are discussing specific numbers with the public. It's at the stage where we're discussing the design direction that we're going to take internally. And then we are going to be moving from that into, okay, now we have this design that we're going to be doing. How can we work to implement this with the players? Because the more specific numbers of it all is really especially going to be what we want players to be assisting us with in the council. There's going to definitely be some where we want them to be. OK, we want this to we, we want uh, Outlaw Rogue to become more of a pirate based spec. How do we want to implement this? Do we give them like the ability to pistol whip someone? Do we give them like the unique ability that they get a one handed sword and a one handed pistol? And that's what they get to do is their ranged weapon and their one hand is the only two they get to do. And talk to the pl and talk to the council more about like how do we want to implement this idea, rather than just everybody's doing ideas all at once, and we have fifteen different philosophies as to how a class should be done, and then we try to move from there because that's not productive, um, and it's not worth wasting someone's time and asking them to write up this whole spiel on how do you numerically want to change this. And then proceeding to tell them, OK, I, I appreciate uh, how you wrote out this amazing way to make it so that Arcane Mage is going to have the exact same damage output as Frost. Uh, anyway, we're going to be making Arcane Mage into a healer now. So have fun. I love the I love the granularity in what you're talking about, the actual like fine point detail in in the discussion um Vrograg, i saw your mic light up there for a moment do you have any thoughts that won't get you booted from that discord I, server <laughs> as a, as a trained journalist i have been given the uh explicit rules and regulations around the gag order i will also disclose as is my right that i am a member of the uh class change council um which i've made public before um, and I would like to say that I, I I concur without actually being able to see the team's discussions, but uh, that has largely been the directive that the class counselors have been given, is that we're really at this point looking for the wider concept of how should... Uh, a spec work in what respects are they lacking how can they be made more fun or dynamic or uh, in a meta sense sometimes better but generally it hasn't uh there hasn't been and you know acolytes if i i don't think i'm going to say here say anything crazy here but like the team hasn't come by with a here's what we're going to do to sunder is that okay? Like that hasn't been what the experience has been like. It's been largely, hey, what are the problems with this class and what can be done to fix them? And how does that fit within the class itself? And there are many very well uh, experienced and well read even uh, lore based wise uh, people in the community council that have been able to give their feedback, give their background, give examples. And there are lots of ideas. And sometimes it's really hard to come to a consensus. And sometimes it's very easy to come to a consensus. Um, and when I published the numbers that I published, I was trying to demonstrate which classes were having the biggest difficulties coming to consensuses or having the most discussion. And uh, that, yes, you are correct, uh, Dan, that did create quite a stir, but I would, I would posit that um, this is a great initiative and it is, it, it's nice because uh, knowing a lot about Turtle Wow's history, um, 
when the team was a lot smaller, when the server population was a lot smaller, class changes were a lot more wild west. It was like, hey, here's an idea. Okay, put it in the game. And then, you know, fast forward a year later and people are like, why does Paladin, why can Paladin global a warrior in, in Battlegrounds? And everyone's just like, oh yeah, we added that a while oh, ago. <laughs> right. And it's, and it's, uh, you know, obviously that's something that I think it's fair for players to be like, this seems a little unbalanced, but um, rather than just having the developers do this in sort of a vacuum, asking for community for their feedback uh, and not just on, not just simply on things like, Hey, this ability is strong, nerf it, buff it, that kind of thing. But also asking us what, what is the design? Like what, what is the idea of this? Because I can definitely, based on what Acklix is saying, I can tell that like the team is also taking what we're saying into account because that's largely been what our discussions have been about in those, in those channels. So um, I am very much looking forward to uh, the developments in the community council. However, I know that I can't talk about much of them, if at all, until the, the appropriate time. And, and, and I am there both as a, as a advisor for certain classes, uh, rogue and shaman mainly, but also as an observer to also watch how things go down so I can help characterize things and also relay that to the community to let them know that like, this isn't just like a dead effort, nothing's happening. Um, I really wanted to help demonstrate that with the news coverage I've given it. Yeah, and I to add a little bit onto what he said, that is basically, Exactly as it is planned to happen, where right now it isn't very much that this is what we're doing to Sunder. What do you think? Right now it is very much not intended to be in that stage, but it's also definitely going to get to that stage eventually where it goes from being primarily based on like getting philosophical feedback to getting actual systemic feedback. Um, feedback on like Okay, is this numerically are these num is this good? I'm just a numerically are these numbers good? That would be that is <laughs> one way to quantify a number. It's it's got to be said too that I really appreciate that the team wants to maintain and hold as much of the essence of vanilla. You don't you don't want to go into Turtle WoW post class changes 2.0, pick up your favorite class and just go what is this? I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, they want it to fit within lore. Uh, Northern R, the, the flagship server, is an RP server. And I, and I think that that also helps continue to, stir, uh, to steer things towards the lore and keeping in integrity with, with that notion. Um, you don't necessarily want to see things that are from you know future versions of of retail wow you want to see something that is in line with lore and in line with the story and and still feels like vanilla without just feeling like oh we're just going to do this thing that they did in cataclysm because we don't want to think about it any further you know that makes that yeah. makes sense and to to be to be clear, the reason that I, I'm poking the bear on you just a little bit on this rogue rag is because um, I, I feel like while you can't state, oh, X class is going to be doing Y, and, and then you get all sorts of hammers thrown at your head from many different directions. Um, you, but you're able to, and I'm glad you did this to a certain extent with what you talked about with chat messages from from yeah. the server and the amount and the discussion that happened because of that is it gives us a good almost emotional balance with where where people are at not saying anything specific as oh this person does up, is upset or this person is arguing in this way but you're simply stating okay this is the amount of discourse that's happening this is kind of the vibe check y yeah absolutely on. because you know there are certainly some classes that just need a ton of work and uh i've been a part of some of those discussions like the the big number of course was was shaman that like had like a factor of more more actual messages sent in it than uh other classes most of them averaged like 1500 ish messages there were some outliers uh one of them which to some controversy was 
uh, of course, Hunters, which didn't even break a thousand. But again, I, I think part of that isn't because that there was, uh, you know, no one in there that wanted to talk. There definitely was discussions happening, but it was more of a situation of like they they already know what the problems are. They already know what the class is. And so there just isn't a lot to talk about, whereas something like Shaman, there are many like rudimentary uh, elemental, not as in the spec, but like elemental levels uh, of problems with just how it was originally designed. And, you know, the the class council on that channel is 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 opening up that can of worms and it's definitely a can of worms that needs to be open. So, you know, I think it's not crazy to say that Hunter is much more uh, clear in what it is than a shaman. Hunter is the person that that shoots the bow or shoots the gun yeah. for the most part. And there is some there and beyond that it's the only one that is really in question is how do we want to enhance survival hunter the sort of idea of the person who will what what do we want survival to be is it the hunter who fights up close range is it the hunter who plays around with traps a lot is it someone who does whatever they have to do to live like is it meant to be more of the not desperation class but the they will they'll use any trick and tool that they have where that is a trap their pet a bow a sword like you're describing yeah. a scrapper a, a scrapper <laughs> yeah it, is the survival hunter more of a scrapper more of a marksman more of a like stored person but it, that's really <laughs> the only one that has much discussion beyond that it's very obvious What's a beast master? It's a hunter who fights with their beast. And it should even, it should also be said that like hunter specifically in the version of the game that, that is live now is probably in one of the best positions that a vanilla era hunter's ever been in. They have a very complex DPS rotation for PVP. They have a couple, a couple interesting things they can do for uh, PVP. Um, and it, it's not, it's not like a, uh, the example I was using, you know, it's, it's not a car wreck, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's looking better off than a lot of other classes that do need some work. You just, it's a quick spit shine. Um, I, I don't think yeah. it behooves us at all to go into details though on, on discussion. I do want to make yeah. sure we save that for, uh, an in-depth conversation, maybe, maybe in March, like, um, for, for context, by the way, everyone, these are going to be recorded monthly. Um, I don't want to burn anyone out, uh, and I don't want to overload um, the amount of discussion that we're providing. So these will be once a month, and the next one we're looking at is going to be um, mi mid-April, I should say. Uh, this one, this is the March episode. Um, with that being said, though, we do need to go ahead and close up shop here. Um, Rograg, any closing thoughts for this broadcast that you want to share uh, in, in regards to um, what we talked about today or anything we have upcoming? Um, generally, when I... Um, if, it's, if this is a spot to do personal plugs, of course, you can check out my news uh, at, at Vrograg Fishlayer at, uh, on YouTube, where I do weekly news updates. I also do a stream on the weekends, most weekends, Saturday noon East Coast time, where I talk about the the most recent goings on it's a lot more laid back um but as far as things i'd like to, i'd love to bring uh attention to um always go to the discord check out any role play events that are happening if you haven't done it before go check it out they're friendly they're inviting and it really adds a new dynamic to the game that you've probably never have thought of i'll always shout out role play Alex, your turn. Um, again, anything that you want to cover, anything you want to add, uh, add on to that we've discussed today, or uh, any kind of personal promotion? Um, nothing really too, too much for me to add on to. Just um, make sure to follow Turtle Wow team on um, Twitter, on Instagram, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube, all that sort of stuff. Um, and keep everyone pings on in the discord so that you can see when i announce new things uh check the forums now and then maybe you'll see something cool in the announcements category uh beyond that just thank you for playing on turtle and 
thank you for your interest in Turtle. Evidently, if you're listening to this, you're somebody who cares about our project enough to listen to three people yap about it for an hour, so thank you very much for your continued support. It means the world to us. Being able to work on this project, it's its something where a lot of us would not be able to do it without the community that we have, so thank you for the continued support. We will continue to keep grinding and keep cooking up more new stuff for everyone, so make sure you keep an eye on everything because we will have more to talk about in the near future. That has been the March edition of A Peak Under the Shell. Look forward to another peak coming up here in April. But with that being said, thank you everyone for joining us for the broadcast. Good night and good luck.